Daniel chapters 9 and 11, we have yet to find a rapture. Matthew, Mark, Luke, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. We have yet to find a rapture. We have yet to find anyone who speaks of a rapture or anyone who even knows anything about the rapture, including Jesus, even when he talks about his own return, his own second coming to the earth, his own, when he gathers the saints, he gives the sequence of events, the order of events. He tells everything. It's just, I know he's not forgetful minded, but he just never mentions the rapture. I wonder why. So we're going to keep looking. Hopefully somebody in the Bible has heard of the rapture or knows anything about it. Or, or if, if not, why is it being taught in the churches? Why has it been preached? Why is it so many people who believe in stuff that's not written in scripture? Chapter 9, verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Now, King Darius was a Persian king. Start over here. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. Verse 5. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from the precepts from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto the, thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day, to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near, and that are far off, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them, whether thou hast driven them, because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. Verse 9. To the Lord our God belongeth mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. 10. Neither have we obeyed the voice of, our, of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. Pause. The curse is poured upon us because we, as his chosen people, the called and the chosen, have rejected to follow him and obey his word. So that's why the curse falls upon us. Verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And we have confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us, yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. Verse 15. And now, our Lord, and now, O Lord, our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten thee renown 
At this, as at this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. Verse 16. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from the city Jerusalem. And again, I just did a report on how the U.S. is telling all of its allies to stop doing business immediately with Iran, which is formerly Persia. Iran has said that they're not going to stop enriching uranium. As a matter of fact, they said they're going to increase, they're going to do more. And we've just uh, sold Israel some more equipment. We're going to have troops in Israel, and uh, they, we're selling them things so they can refuel midair. So the war is getting ready to start up. Verse 16. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Verse 17. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O my God, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine eyes and behold our desolations. And thy city, which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O my God. For thy city, people are called by thy name. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin, and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, there he is, the archangel Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touch me, about the time of the evening oblation, and he informed me, and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon the people. Now, there are a lot of teachings about there about the 70 weeks and 70 years and all this stuff. Y'all can look that up because there's a lot of different theories on that. I haven't been given any um, discerning thing to say about it except for it's interesting. You know, somebody has to be <laughs> getting it right. But it's not something that I specialize in, the, the, the 70 weeks. Or so I just uh, keep it going. <laughs> so. I'm up here. Okay. Verse 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness, everlasting, that's the kingdom of God, and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks, the street shall be built again, and the wall, even the troublous times. So it's saying it's going to be built again. Okay. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince shall come and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and until the end of the war desolations are determined verse 27 and he shall confirm the covenant now this is talking about the anti right here verse 27 and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week so that's seven days that's why some people say seven years is the um, 
tribulation period. Uh, we really don't know. Okay. Verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. May the Lord have a blessing on the readers, hearers, doers of his holy word. Let's go to Daniel.